I've been with the Eastern North Carolina chapter for a little over 24 years, okay. since 1984. I got involved with the National MS Society because I had gone and gotten a master's in social work and had done my graduate school work um, also at a national nonprofit health agency and really enjoyed what I did there. So when I graduated from school, I honestly really needed a job. Um, and started looking in the paper and found this job advertised. Um, it was a blind ad. I didn't know where I was uh, applying. And so when I applied, I came um, in and looked at it. And, and I think there were about 300 applicants. And so what are the chances of me getting that job, you know, being right out of school? But I did um, and have been here ever since. My first memory of this chapter is um, coming to work and going to my first program where I actually got to meet people with MS because I really, at the time when I first started working here, I didn't know anybody who had multiple sclerosis. So it's really, um, I think, very interesting for me and very challenging to see how people with MS actually um, lived in their daily lives and how they coped with their disease. The work environment here at our chapter is great. Um, we have a very, have very much a team concept. Um, we all work together well. We have several different departments. Um, each of us have a very important part uh, in trying to end the devastating effects of MS and so um, it's a great organization to work for and a great group of people to work with. Um, since I came here the biggest changes I've noticed of course have been the increase in the number of staff. Um, we, I think when I started here there were three of us on staff and now there are about 17. Um, but also just the number of programs that we're able to offer, um, the amount of research that's going on in multiple sclerosis has also increased. Um, I can remember maybe getting one article on research maybe quarterly and now there's something that comes out weekly or several things that come out weekly about research and that just didn't happen when I first started. So that's very exciting to see the pace of, of research that's picked up as well. Well, my hopes for our chapter in the future would be that we would continue to grow, that we continue to offer great programs um, for people with MS that we could really expand. We have such a large chapter area, we have 49 counties, that we could really expand and be able to provide programming for everybody in our chapter area. Well, I think just a lot of times my, my best memories have been just really going to some of the programs and getting to, to meet people um, that really cope in a way that I just can't even possibly understand what it's like. I think. Um, sometimes at events, um, working in those things where you just don't really even know what to expect and the, the hard work that you put in for that. Um, I can remember, um, you know, just taking clients. We have, we've had camps before, doing a couples retreat one time. I remember being um, pretty tired and pretty, a little burned out with my job. And, and I went to this couples retreat and just the wonderful things that happened there, all the energy, all the great people I came out remembering this is why I work at the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. I'm Barbara Riddle. I was the executive director for the Triangle Chapter of Multiple Sclerosis from 1971 to 1983. I, uh, I am the third executive director that the chapter had. We served 36 East and North Carolina chapters and our main source of income at that time was door-to-door -door campaigns and we then branched out into Dinner of Champions which became a very successful fundraiser for the chapter. We started out very small with um, a small board of trustees and we were able to add quite a few um, prominent business people in our community to help us with our fundraising efforts. Yes, the, the office uh, for all the first three of the executive directors were in their homes and uh, my, my home, I, I did not have furniture in my dining room so that became my MS office and I have a desk about the size of a postage stamp and an old Underwood typewriter um, on a metal stand I had a card table that I draped with a cloth and that's where I stored my materials underneath. And um, my utility room became the storage space for the wheelchairs and the walkers, and things like that that we needed for the patients. Well, our first uh, major fundraising was a commerce and industry drive in 1973 with ex-Governor Bob Scott. Um, he tapped uh, some businessmen to be 
chairman under him and they raised about $17,000. Uh, 1974 was the beginning of our Dinner of Champions. We roasted Norm Sloan, who was the head basketball coach at NC State. And every year um, after that, we had a roast, and all of our roasts were um, sports related. We did uh, Bones McKinney and Lefty Drizel and Jim Valvano and the big four coaches um, Wake Forest, Duke State, and UNC. Chapel Hill, and um, after I left, the, the roast, the Dinner of Champions roast con continued, and at some point they branched off though and, and no longer did the, um, the sports figures. I think there will always be a need of four chapter here to serve the patients who, um, who have MS, but I just, I'm, I'm so pleased to have been a a small part of the beginning of the chapter because I certainly had no training, um, formal training in, um, in multiple sclerosis in the work. I was scared to death the first time the telephone rang and would I say sclerosis right? <laughs> uh, would I know, remember how to spell it? Um, would I be able to tell someone um, what it was if they asked? But somehow I muddled through it. I began at the National MS Society in February of 2003 and my title was Chapter President. I was Chapter President, uh, you're the Chief Executive Officer and so your responsibility is partnership with the board and the direction of the organization and then managing the, the staff and the volunteers who are doing that and uh, helping to do the fundraising and, and just keeping the chapter in general on the right direction. I think the biggest change was just the growth in the capacity of the chapter. So we had about a million and a half dollar budget when I got there and about a three million dollar budget when I left and that really fundamentally changes what you can aspire to. So our, our programs were always excellent. They were also scaled to the budget so as the budget grew, we were able to be more ambitious about the kind of programs we wanted to do, which is great. We also significantly uh, increased our research donation our, uh, every year, so by the end, because of the growth in revenue, we were giving more and more money to research as well. Yeah, before I started the chapter, I didn't know anything about multiple sclerosis at all except the name, and even then, I, as I interviewed, I was scared I'd mispronounce it. So. You, it, it's a complicated disease, so it takes a little bit of time to get your arms around, and really, I guess nobody really knows enough about it already, but um, that's an interesting part, learning about the science of the disease itself. Well, really, just, you learn about MS, I think, just in the, well, maybe it's just my learning style, but learn in the course of meeting people who have multiple sclerosis, and they begin to share their stories with you as they get to know you. And I think that's the most important part of it if you're working for the MS Society is knowing the great variety of ways that it impacts people and how people, what kind of support needs to be in place for people to deal with that. My hopes for the chapter going forward is that it will continue on the path I think it's on, which I, you know, I am biased, but I think it's the best chapter in the society short of a chapter in the cluster A, the big market chapters who have so much more resources that they are really different animals. So the chapters that are like ours, I think it's the best, and I think it's a leader. I think the people throughout the team, staff and volunteers, bring so much to the table that they can share throughout the organization. and. I, I think that the chapter is successful in so many different ways that it provides leadership and other, other chapters being able to move forward just out of the hope of being able to do some of the strong things that the chapter's done. I'm very proud of the chapter and I think it'll continue to be great.